to the house of God uh -huh. now for your own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Jesus. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this fight. Right? Sis, right? What do they say? Come as ye are. That's not what the Bible say. That's right. The Bible does not say come as ye are. You got to get yourself together at least a little bit and start repenting right. before you get a little bit more understanding. Right? You got to give God something to work with. Because God don't want our men rocking dresses. Right. God don't want our men rocking purses. Right. God don't want our sisters dressing like men. Right? right? And we're going to prove that out the Bible. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. The Bible says that women adorn themselves, that women wear modest apparel. That's women should wear or commanded to wear modest clothing. Do you, do you see that in a black community? No. Do you see the majority of our women wearing modest? A lot of our women don't even know what modesty is. You know? What is modesty? What would you say is modesty? What I used to do wear skirts and dresses and nothing showing no skin and wrapping my hair before I go outside. What, what would you say is modesty? Nah, for women. For women. What would you say is a modest uh, clothing for women to wear? Everything covered. What it means to be modest is exactly what you guys just said. You hit the bullseye. Very correct. It's not wearing clothing that's revealing yourselves in a sexual manner. Right. But now when you look in our communities, how are our women portrayed on the television? Just like that. The opposite, they're over-sexualized. You look at the, the people they set up in our community, Nicki Minaj and Meg, the, 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 all of that, Walker. huh? Yeah, 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 they ain't dressed, my, they dress over-sexualized. So now it says that women ought to uh, 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 adorn themselves in modest clothing and what else? With shamefacedness. Our women are not shamefaced. Our women are actually haughty. They walk around proud with and they should be, yeah, with, yeah, exactly, exactly. So now, what the topic is, is laid out, is clothing, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Because you already know, we're not beating a dead horse. We're trying to get this in your brain housing group. Well, we're going to get you back on track, my sister. We, we got you, right? Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Because it says women should not wear clothing that pertain to men, and men should not wear clothing that pertain to women. Because right. if we came through, if we, hey, my sister right there, if we came up here reading the Bible of all books, rocking dresses and little purses, you would be like, hey, yo, that's out of order right there. Would you not feel that way? That would be out of, you said no? I didn't, I, hey, hey, come here, my sister. Come, 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 come. I'm gonna show you something in the Bible. Come here, real quick, real quick, real quick. I'm gonna show you something, right? Let's backtrack, I'm gonna show y'all something. Cause my brother, my sister, if I was to come up here reading the Bible, wearing a dress, and I had a little purse, how would you feel about that? How would you feel? Cause that's the question that I laid out. You said, well, he'd be out of order. What do you think that was out of order? Looking like okay, that's weird, but hey, whatever. Whatever, cool, whatever's cool is you do you. Whatever makes you happy. Okay? That's not what the Bible says. Who I got you. Come I here, come here. I'm gonna show you something. Come here, come here. You my I, sister. Who am I to judge? Who are you? Who who are we to judge? I'm gonna show you something, right? Because look, I can't judge you. You, you, how you 
You grew up with your father in the house? And my mom, yeah. How would you feel if your pops came in the house wearing a dress? You'd be like, yo, pops, yo, what are you doing? Are you crazy? I would never want, if I had a father like that, I would never want him walking in the house with a dress on. We just read in a Bible, right? There's a dress code for men and there's a dress code for women. We read in the book of Deuteronomy 22 and 5 that women should not wear men's clothing and men should not wear women's clothing. But let's go back to uh, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. I'm going to show you something. What is a woman? What is, we got a website. What is women clothing and what's men clothing? I'm going to show you. Go to go to 1 Timothy 2 and 9, and then we're going to oh. go back to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Oh. What's your name, sister? Alice. Alice? She no, Atlas. Atlas. It's okay, just a, can I call you A? I got you, my sister. A. All right? Here we go. Listen to this. We're reading the Bible, right? We're gonna, we read this earlier, but you wasn't around to hear it, so we're going to read it one more time just for you, right? 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In the like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it's talking about women, right? Yeah. It says women should adorn themselves, clothe themselves in modest clothing, modest apparel. Okay. My sister A, what does it mean to be modest? No, well, no, nah, nah, I'm just like if we was to pull up a dictionary right now. Like if I was to pull up my phone... And I was to say, uh, if I was to Can say, I my own of hey Google, what is modest? Let's see what the what's, let's see what the what the Bible says. Oh, uh, the Before internet says. Say, Can I use my own? Go ahead, give your definition. Being modest is wearing something maybe like this, something that don't show your ass, your boobs, something comfortable, appropriate. That's my. Of How old are you? 32. You're 32. You're uh, in, in your late 30s. We're all around the same age, right? I, 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 what about you, right? Do you agree with that? The definition of modest. It's just wearing something comfortable. What would you say? Because that's ooh, let's 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 get a consensus. Let's let's see what everybody got to say. What would you say, my friend? Appropriate. Appropriate. So now, my sister A, I'm not trying to disrespect you and to play you in no type of way, because I love my people. All I'm trying to do is, is so we all have the right understand, because you're in your 30s. There's little sisters that's looking up to you, right? So this brother right here, he gave a good answer. He said clothing that is appropriate. I'm going to ask everybody here, and we're not bashing you. We're not bashing you. Do you think, do you think that this is appropriate clothing? Like godly clothing? What, what's your question? Oh, I don't have a question. Do you do you think? I believe, I believe this what it, what it says. Uh, oh, you got the definition? Oh, no doubt. What, what what you got? Uh, uh, Miriam's dictionary. What you got? Let's give you the mic. Let's give you the microphone. No, he has the scripture. Oh, you got the scripture? Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Same one you read. Same one you got. What, what scripture is that? First Timothy 2 and 9. Right? So listen, listen, listen. You read it. You read it, my friend. Read what you got. In like manner also the woman adored themselves in modest apparel with um, Modest apparel. What is apparel? That's clothing. clothing. What is apparel? Clothing. What is apparel? What is apparel? Clothing. So now what does it mean to have modest clothing? What does that mean? Not showing anything. Can we see her legs right there? Can we see her shape and all of that? That's not modest, my sister. We're telling you straight up. Because look, 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 look. I'm not trying to play you, but we got the definition of modest right here, right? Let's get the definition. I got phone calls coming in, all of that. It says definition of modest, right? Oh, uh, let's see, modesty. Let's see, let's pull it up here. Somebody give me the definition of modest. Define modest. Who got it? So that's what we're teaching out here. Because a lot of us, we, we have our own definition. Like the sister said, it's comfortable. What might be comfortable for you might not be appropriate for God. Because you love God, right? Would you not say you love God? Yes, I love God. Let's see what... What does your dressing has to do with anything? We're, we're going to show you, but here we're going to read. What does... What is modest? What is a modest woman? Let's see. 
We're gonna. I got you. I got you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you the proper answer first. We're gonna go over the definition of modesty, right, Reed? Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. This is the Collins Eight. Calling Collins English Dictionary. A woman can be described as modest when she avoids doing or wearing anything that might cause other people to have sexual feelings toward her. So now you're dressed in a in a sexual way. You what? are. You got the short skirt on. No the legs is popping out. No you got the the uh your your figure is showing like blau and blau. Like you should that's not modest, my sister. Well, so now the question well, you laid out. Well, this is my thing. All right. If you're gonna look at me and feel some special way, that's your business, not mine. Let's that's go to Matthew's five. God, Let's go to Matthew's five. What is it? Twenty-eight. I'm gonna show you something, because now, if I look at you in a sexual way, or you see men walking around and they, and they're staring at you like they might not understand the scriptures, they might that's they that's might look that. at you in a sexual way. That has nothing to do with you. No, but let's not. see what Jesus Christ has to say about because you're in a way. You're right. The men are wrong if they look at you in a sexual yeah. way. But let's see something. Let's get it. Matthew chapter, chapter 5 and verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So, yeah, you're right to an extent. However, so now if men are looking at you in a lustful way because you're dressed sexy, right? You're dressed provocatively. Who's more so in the error? The men? Or the woman who's dressed provocatively to have them set up in the era of sin. What is the I think both parties are wrong. What? And I think you're kind of double wrong according I'm, to the Bible. I'm Keep reading. Not double wrong Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. It has everything to do with you. We just read in the Bible, there, there are an examples of women dressed, dressed in an over-sexualized way. They would be considered harlots and prostitutes. Are we calling you that in any type of way? No, we're not disrespecting you. However, what we're saying is according to God's word, you ought not to dress that way. Because a lot of people might say, well, Ezekiel, there's no judgment on how I dress. I can dress how I want to dress. I can dress sexy. Uh, 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 if, if a muscular man pops out the house with no shirt on and all of that, God don't care about dressing sexy and modest and all of that. But let's see what the Bible says, that there's a judgment. When Christ returns, there's going to be a severe penalty that up. everyone pays for being dressed in the wrong attire. Right. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to save your soul right. from judgment. So listen to this, my sister A. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. That's when Christ returns. When Christ returns, what society will have you believe is that Christ is going to give everybody an award for, for, for being the best, uh, uh, the sexiest dresser and, and, a, and a balloons and a kiss on the cheek. But it says when the day of the Lord comes, it's a dreadful day. Right? Listen. Hey, my sister. Don't run off. Listen one more time. Listen to this. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. That are clothed. This means that there's a heavy penalty that a lot of people are going to pay when Christ returns. Right. Now, the good part about what's happening right now is Christ has not returned yet. So we have what? An opportunity to get right with God. Right. So we're not out here condemning anybody. We're not out here bashing anybody. What we're out here doing is exhorting our people to repent. Changing your attire is one of the easiest things you could possibly do. Right. Changing your clothes. God don't want our women dressing sexy. God wants our women dressing modest. Uh, right. Now, are we, tell, are we telling women to dress like Aunt Jemima? Are we telling our women to dress like a runaway slave? Oh, no. When you read in the Bible, our women had on the flyest garment. Our men, when you, where was that? In Ezekiel 16. We had the baddest garments on. We had the baddest clothes on. But now you look at 2022 and our people were, were, were at a low, low estate. 
where we think it's okay for women to show all their curves, all the natural outline of their body. My sister, my brother, why don't we all come to one agreement and say a woman should save those, those features for her husband? Why the whole world gotta go see all your good, sister? We the, we the, we're the flyest. We're the baddest at anything we step foot on. Why? Because God set it up that way. We're not telling you to dress like no runaway slave. Let's get it, Ezekiel 16. What? Yeah, your hair looks fly, my sister, and that's a beautiful thing, right? Let's, let's get it. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 11. I deck thee also with ornaments. So why can't, why can't, why can't we come out of the whorish uh, apparel? Why we gotta dress like how they tell us to on TV? Why can't we have the fly ornaments, right? Cause that's what God put on us from the beginning, right, Reed? And I, what was that? I was saying, cause we've been living the whole life, letting the world live. We, that's, that's truly correct, my brother. We've been living our lives the way the world got it laid out for us. So my sister A, you gotta come back and hear this. This is some good medicine right here. It said like, we look back and we think that dressing modest is a woman looking like a, I keep saying this over and over, but this is what we have in our brain. We have a, a, a Harriet Tubman, but God said that our women had a, a, were adorned with ornaments on their headpiece, right? What else? And I put bracelets upon thy hands, right. and a chain on thy neck, right. and I put a jewel on thy forehead, right. and earrings in thine ears, right. and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Right. That was So our sisters had beautiful jewelry. Our sisters had a beautiful crown. That's now, 2022, a lot of our sisters is bald-headed. Why? Why is our sisters bald-headed? Because they've been perming their hairs year after year after year trying to look like the white woman perming their hair when god already set their hair in order right keep reading thou wast decked with gold and silver right. and thy raiment was a fine linen so it said our raiment our clothing had fine linen and now you look at our clothing now and it's trash a lot of our sisters think they doing the most but it's garbage in god's eyes what, what else you got, I got a question. yeah what's your question Hey, that's right, because when we when we look at, um, uh, uh, what is it, Isaiah 3, what's that? Five, all right, so when we, when we look at this, when we look at, um, what is it, Isaiah, what is it, 316? When we look at Isaiah 316, the consequence for our sister's permanent hair is no hair, right? Let's get it, let's see. Because we, yeah. we could read over here in another chapter in Isaiah where we have fine raiment, fine linen, embroidered work in our clothing. Now sisters ain't, ain't got, got rags. Now sisters got bald headed. Now sisters used to smell with fine perfumes. Now sisters stank. That's biblical, let's see. Isaiah chapter three and verse 16. Everybody want John 316, but what about Isaiah 316, right? This is the medicine right here. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. This is the so-called black woman in America right now, haughty. That's right. They got their head high, nose up in the air, looking right. down on the men, right? right. So we got we to gotta exhort our women to be the opposite of that. Right. Right. Submissive. Because this is the consequence of a haughty woman, right? Read. And walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, right. walking and mincing as they go, right. and making a tinkling with their feet. Right. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. That's what I'm talking about, that bald headedness. That's why a lot, you see a lot of black women over 40, they ain't got no hair, cause they haughty. Why? Cause they they spent 40 years perming their hair, trying to look like a so-called white woman, uh, uh, got the braids in their hair and all of that. Now they're bald headed, right? Keep reading, what else? And the Lord will discover their secret parts. Right. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments right. about their feet, right. and their calls, and the round tires like the moon, and the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels. Right, go to verse 24. This is the, this is the ultimate consequence right here. Right. Verse 24. This is right now, 2022. And it shall come to pass. That instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. It's talking about their their private parts. Instead, it stinks, just like a lot of our women's attitudes, right? right. So now we want to exhort our women. This might sound rough. 
It might sound harsh, but that's what God has to say about the state of the so-called black women in 2022. Right. So we got to stand up as men and be leaders. We got to exhort our women to keep the commandments. Proverbs 3 and verse 31. Don't be trying to look like no white woman. Try to exhort yourself to what? Dress modest. Try to exhort yourself what? To have a cheerful countenance, right? To keep God's commandments, right? Because our women, they shouldn't be permanent here. Our women should not be out here breaking the Sabbath, looking down on the men, trying to look like our oppressors, right, Reed? And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. That's the ultimate result of a destroyed black woman. So we used to scream black power while hair wrong was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.